Joining us now, Jim Jordan, congressman from the great state of Ohio, on what's happening on the uh, immigration front. The demonization game is going the other way, if you ask me. The left is demonizing those who believe in enforcing our laws and real compromise. That, frankly, is not all that we want it to be, but it's a compromise. But they're the ones demonizing and always have been. Uh, Jim Jordan joins us now. Congressman, uh, great to have you with us. How are you? Happy Valentine's Day. I'm doing fine. Same to you. Uh, they also want to demonize the rule of law. Um, I, my, my, my guess is you've been to some naturalization ceremonies like I have, uh, yeah. Laura. And when those individuals who did it the right way hold up their hand and, and, and the judge tells them it's an actual judicial proceeding, the judge says, congratulations, and they take the oath, and he says, congratulations, you're now a citizen of the greatest country in the world. The smile on their face. I have seen it. And then the last one I was at, the judge said, does anyone want to say something? There was a gentleman who who come here from India, and he talked about how this is the greatest country in the world where you oh. can chase down your goals and dreams. And the students who were there, it was a great message for young people to hear. That's what they're also demonizing, and that's what frustrates me and bothers me probably more than anything else when I hear lines like you just uh, – like you just played. And I appreciate what you've done on this issue. You've been a leader, national leader on this, the rule of law and doing it right and making our legal system work better, but but also doing what the American people elected us to do, which is secure this border. That's what we got to focus on. Congressman Jordan, I saw <clears throat> today, uh, and I didn't, uh, I didn't know about this until I just received word, that, and, and I don't know if you know this, but the, in the budget that was just passed, this Mongo spending uh, bill yeah. that just passed, apparently... The Republicans allowed the continuation of uh, Chinese uh, uh, pay forum visas where the Chinese can come in with EB-5 applications. Mm-hmm. They spend a, a particular amount of money and they get uh, access to the United States. And that's continuing under this new budget, which yeah, well, ho- ho- outrageous. Ho- bad things. Yeah, a host of bad things continued under this budget. And to add insult to injury, it wasn't just a bunch of bad things continued. There was also a huge increase in spending, one of the largest spending increases in American history. Uh, again, when when just a few years ago, uh, Speaker Ryan was viewed as the leader on fiscal responsibility in our party and now presiding over a, a budget bill that, that's going to allow for, for $300 and some billion dollars over the next two years, for goodness sake. So, yeah, there was a whole host of problems. It, but it underscores why we need to pass good, good immigration legislation, one that is consistent. What, what I always say, Lord, is one, is one that is consistent with a bill that's consistent with what the people said we should do in the mandate of the 2016 election, which is when you can just rattle it off, border security wall, end chain migration, stop the visa lottery, do E-Verify, get rid of this crazy sanctuary city policy, reform the asylum, all those things that are just good common sense. And the American people are just – they're, they're good folks, and they say, you do all those things in the right way, in the right order, and you prioritize those. We're willing to figure out something on this DACA situation, but don't, don't do this game you've done forever, which is, oh, let's give amnesty, and then we promise, promise, promise we'll finally get to some kind of security and some kind of wall. They are not going to buy that, and they shouldn't buy that because they've been fooled too many times before on that one. Well, and again, I think that Republicans have to be very careful not to demoralize – their base going into this critical yep. midterm election cycle. We, we've gotten some good news, Congressman Jordan, on the generic ballot, yep. which for the first time Republicans are now leading, which when you just ask a question, you're going to support Republicans or Democrats in, in congressional elections. Now Republicans are slightly ahead. But we just had in Sarasota last night a Republican district go to a Democrat in a special mm-hmm. election. It was a low turnout, about 36 percent turnout in the special election yesterday, but the Democrats picked up a seat yesterday in a special election. Yeah. You don't want that to continue, I can tell you that. No, we want to we want to win this special congressional race up in up in the Pittsburgh area with Rick Saccone, who's a good good candidate mm-hmm. and someone we're supporting. Uh, but you're right, and I would argue the reason the generic ballot's good and the reason uh, President Trump's rating has come up because look at his first year. Look at his first year. Taxes are down. The economy is growing. ISIS is backpedaling. Uh, the embassy is going to Jerusalem. Uh, Neil Gorsuch is on the Supreme Court. When you step back. I mean, the CNN and MSNBC wouldn't say this, but when you step back and look at that first year, you can put the president's first year up against anybody. That's, that's, some, that's some really amazing accomplishments in one year, and that's why you're seeing things turn around, particularly when Americans get to keep more of their money and see more of their hard-earned money in their paycheck each week. That, that, that's why those numbers are coming back in the right direction. But you're exactly right. If we screw up this immigration issue and do something that's not consistent with the mandate of 2016 on top of what just happened with that crazy spending bill last week, 
we will have some concerns at election time. And it's not just about Republican politics. It's about what's best for the country. And that's why we've got to do the right thing on immigration. Uh, Congressman Jordan, let's move on to what's happening uh, with this uh, declassification of the Democrat response to the House Intel Committee mm-hmm. memo on the surveillance of an, an American citizen uh, through the use of this uh, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act uh, court uh, you know, uh, application funded by Hillary Clinton uh, with w- what we know so far, the new news on this and whether Republicans will make any headway in really finding out you know, how this all occurred. Susan Rice's bizarre email to herself <laughs> saying that Barack Obama did everything by the book. That was the, sending it at 12.15, I mean, by but... the way, after she shouldn't be in the White House any longer on, on January 20th. How, how strange was that? No, I shouldn't laugh, but but I, you 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 had the same reaction. It's, it's it's ridiculous sending an email to yourself that the president said two weeks ago. I just remembered here the last day in his administration. I just remembered that the president said to do everything by the book. Well, you should be doing everything by the book. And oh, by the way, this is the same Susan Rice who we deposed on the Benghazi committee. The same Susan Rice five days after four Americans gave their life for this country went on national television five different shows and said it was a video that caused the whole thing when they knew. They knew exactly at the time it wasn't a video. It was a terrorist attack, and they tried to spin it off this way because they were 56 days in front of an election. And so when Susan Rice says this, I, I, I mean, I literally started laughing. I'm like, come on, no one believes this is anything but uh, you know, covering her backside and, and, and trying to protect the administration for well, I, all the ridiculous things they did. Yeah, I, I was half ho- half expecting in that email to herself. She, she said, and by the way, I still maintain that that Benghazi attack was caused by that hokey video that was posted <laughs> yeah. online. Yeah. So, yeah, she should have just and, put everything in that email. Yeah, yeah. exactly right. And, and by the way, when I when we did unmasking of all these individuals, it was totally by the book. We, we exactly. unmasked all these people. It was by the book, and it was because we yeah. needed this information. So, oh, come on. Here was the interesting thing I, I took away. From, there were several things that happened last week, and then, of course, this week with her, with her uh, email. But the text message last week I thought was, was particularly interesting where Paige says, POTUS, referring to President Obama, wants to know everything, and I think that's the key word, everything we're doing. And what I found significant about that was the timeline, because on July 5th of 2016, Clinton is clear. No charges are brought. Comey did his famous, his famous press conference. Uh, a, a few weeks later, the Russian investigation is opened. The Russia-Trump investigation is opened by Peter Strzok, the same agent who ran the Clinton investigation. He opens that. Two weeks later, there's a text message between Strzok and Page where they talk about the insurance policy. And two weeks after that, September 2nd, is the text message where the President of the United States wants to know everything we're doing. Now, so in, within an eight-week time period, Clinton's cleared, Russia, Trump is open, insurance policy text happens, and then the text message that says the President wants to know everything. And then we learn this week, oh, the President was doing everything by the book, according to Susan Rice email to herself. That's, that's, that's interesting stuff and in why we need to investigate as thoroughly uh, this issue as thoroughly as we can. And that's why we've called for a second special counsel. Well, and what's the latest on that? Who would who would have to approve that second special counsel? Well, I always say this. I don't like special counsels, but I see no other remedy. Mueller can't expand his probe into all this area because I think he's he's compromised in, in many ways. Uh, he should he should just stay focused on what he's doing, and that hopefully that gets over with as soon as possible. I don't I don't think Sessions if 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 the you can't have the the Justice Department, the FBI investigating themselves. So I think you have to by you know there's just no other remedy. You have to go with the second special counsel. That's why we called for it months ago, six months mm-hmm. ago. And each and every week, more and more people are saying, yeah, that's the only way we're going to get any kind of credibility back with these top people at the FBI. Uh, you know, I completely agree. I mean, it's, at this point, it's just – it's it's complete insanity. Well, think about it. Comey has – Comey's gone. McCabe is leaving. Jim Baker, former uh, general counsel at the FBI, has been demoted and is no longer general counsel. Rubicki, the former chief of staff at the FBI, is leaving. Lisa Page has been demoted and, and is uh, a different job at the FBI. Peter Strzok has been demoted and, and, and at a different job at the FBI. And over at Justice Department, Bruce Orr has been demoted and Sally Yates is gone. I mean, those are the top people. There is something wrong there at the top. And we need a second special counsel to come in and, and figure out what, what, what happened, give us the answers and hopefully restore confidence in those those key, key positions. Jim Jordan, uh, great state of Ohio. Thank you so much, Congressman you Jordan. Bet.